Hello, and welcome to this lesson in discrete structures. Today I'm going to do a lesson on how to figure out how many bits or binary digits or base 2 digits you need to represent a particular base 10 number. So we've been work we work with this in computer science an awful lot. There's a lot of base 2 stuff going on. So I just wanted to review some place values. How do we figure out place values? Well, in our number system, let me start with that. It, you know, if I write the number five, seven, eight, two, zero, we just assume this is a base 10 number because there's no subscript. We don't put the 10 below. If this were a base, well, it couldn't be anything higher than base nine, uh, lower than base nine, I would have to put a base nine there. But this is a base 10 number, decimal number is the other way. We refer to these as digits. So the value of the first digit is the value of the symbol times the value of the place. And the place has a value of 10 to the 0 or 1. It doesn't matter what number base you're in. That first value, the, the, the place value for this to the right is always 1. Otherwise, you'd have no way to express 1. Now, this could have as much as a 9 in it. We're in base 10. That means we have 10 symbols. Our symbols are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you say, well, no, there's only 9. No, you got to count the 0. So counting from 0 makes some of this confusing. The fact that th there are 10 symbols here. 0 is the first one. 1 is the second one. 2 is the third one, etc. Until we get to 9 is the 10th one. So in base 2, there are only 2 symbols. In binary, we either use a 0 or a 1. So that gives us a problem when we go to count, as we'll see in a minute. But the other thing about base 2 is the base is the basis of the place value. In base 10, our place values go 10 to the 0, or 1s we call them, 10 to the 1st, or 10s you learn to call them, 10 to the 2nd, 100th place. So there's 800. 8 times 100 is the value of this place this number. 10 to the third is a thousand, and then we 10 to the fourth is 10,000, and so on. We just, and that has the effect of adding a zero each time, because that's what happens when you multiply by 10. So this is 10. This eight is really eight hundred worth eight times a hundred. This seven is worth seven times a thousand. This five is worth five times 10,000. When we do that in base two, we do follow this same pattern of putting an exponent on our base to determine the value of each place. Starting at the right, 2 to the 0 is 1. Now, the, the only difference between what's on the right here and what's on the right there is this place value on the right can hold any of these symbols. This place value on the right can only hold nothing or 1. That because it's in base 2. Those are the only two symbols we have. So. This is 2 to the 0. This is whatever you have here, either a 0 or a 1. You're going to multiply that by a 1. And then if you, if you have a long number here and you wanted to figure out the value of it, you would take whatever is in the next. So let's do a 1 and a 0. So the next base, is, this is how many 2s we have. We have no sets of 2. We have a set of 1, no, no groups of 2. This will be how many groups of 4 we have. And this, so you go 2 squared, 2 cubed, 2 to the 4th, and you can see that pattern. Now, if I wanted to figure out the base 10 representation or the decimal representation or how many things we have in the system we count in, what I would do is I would take this 1 and multiply it by 1, this 0 and multiply it by 2, this 1 and multiply it by 4 because that's the place it's in, this 8, uh, this 1 and multiply it by 8, and then I would add up all of those. So I would get 8 plus 4 plus 0 plus 1 or 12. I would get 13. So with I, it takes me four spaces or, or digits to represent the number 13 in base 2, whereas it only takes two, one set of 10 plus three sets of 1, to represent the amount 13 in base 10. And here are your place values moving forward. As you go further in computer science, you will know these. I just knew these when I was, even back when I was taking engineering courses that were um, basically for electrical engineering students, I still knew my powers of two 
better than I do now, but I, I certainly knew all of these. So that's some basics of binary. So you have some interesting patterns here, and sometimes we're asked to answer questions about converting decimal to binary. That's actually more difficult. That's a different algorithm than converting binary to decimal. I have posted some videos on that algorithm, and your book has some information about an algorithm to go from decimal to binary. But you also have some other questions that ask things like, how many bits would you need to represent this number? And there's without, and it says without converting the number, without running through that whole decimal to binary algorithm. So a couple of things I want to point out here that I've done this up to 2 through the 10th, but notice that represents 11 bits because we start counting at 0 again. So I've got 1 through 10 here, plus the 0 is the 11th bit. And that may get a little confusing with what we do below, but if you, if you just kind of focus on the algorithm I give you, that should work out okay. So there's 11 bits shown because we start counting with 0. This means to represent 512, you would have needed 10 bits or 10 spaces, not 9. To represent 256, you need 9 spaces, even though that's 2 to the 8th. But you can get numbers bigger than 256 with 9 spaces. That's what this is about. I could get 256 plus 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which actually will end up being 511 if I have 9 spaces, even though 252 to the 8th is 256. These nine space, spaces, these nine digits, these nine bits, we call them in binary, will allow me to write numbers up to 511. Once I get to 511, every one of these spaces will have a 1 in it, and to go 1 higher, I'm going to have to add a bit. And so I would put a 1 in the 512, and the rest would be zeros. And we'll see that when we count. So here's, an here's how you count in binary. 0. 0, 1, I just need one space. Now, I can't use the number 2. I, can't, I cannot use this symbol in base 2. So what I have to do is this will tell me how many 2s I have, and this will tell me how many 1s I have. Just like in base 10, this tells me how 10s I have and how many 1s I have. So to add 1 to 2, I can just add 1 in the 1s place. So that just I still only need 2 bits. But now both of these are full. So I need to add something on the left. So I put a 1 there. So to go from 3 to 4, I have a 4's place now, and nothing in the 2's and nothing in the 1's. I want to add 1 to that. 4 plus 1 is 5. Now I want to add 1 to this, but I can't add 1 because I can't use the number 2, so it's like I carry it and make a 0. Some of you may be familiar with that. I add 1 here. Now once I have all 1's, I need another so that continues on. You can see how the counting works here. You can see that pattern. But then what I want to show you is the largest number I can represent in some number n bits is 2 raised to the nth power minus 1. And that's the case where all n bits would have a value of 1. And the value in decimal of that would be 2 to the nth minus 1. So 7 uses 3 bits all filled with 1. So you have 2 cubed. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. So if I have three spaces to put ones in, I can represent a number as large as seven. If I had five spaces to put a one in, that number would be two to the fifth minus one, or 32 minus one, or 31. So this is ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteens, 16 times 2 is the next space would be 32. So if I have all 1s, I have 31, and I would have to make another digit to go to 32. So that should help you answer some of those homework questions. Because here's how it works. For example, so if, if there were 11 bits, the largest decimal number you can represent is 2047. If there are 10 bits, you would do 2 to the 10th minus 1. 2 to the 10th is 1,028. Minus 1 would be 1,027. So if you needed a number between 1,027, bigger than 1,027, but smaller than 2,047, you would need 11 bits. It would be the minimum you would need. But what about for the number 408? 
I'm doing this kind of by trial and error, but also knowing that two to the eighth is, you know, 408 is between um, 256 and 512. So I, I can go back to this little chart I made here. You can make this chart for yourself anytime you need it. So two to the eighth is 256, two to the ninth is 512. But remember up here I said two to the eighth here, this is our ninth digit. We're really just, the exponent really just tell, will tell us how many bits we need here. You don't have to worry about that here. If 2 to the 8th is 256, 256 minus 1 is 255. 408 is bigger than 255. So I tried 2 to the 9th. 2 to the 9th is 512. 512 minus 1 is 511. 408 is in between these two values. So the least number I need is 9 spaces to represent 408. Now, those aren't all going to be filled with ones in this case. The number 511 would all be filled with ones. But the question doesn't always ask you, what is the binary digit? It says, how many digits are you going to need? Now, you could represent 408 with 10 digits, or 10 bits, I should be saying. But you don't need to. You only need nine. The minimum number you need is nine. I hope you find this helpful. And thank you for joining me. Email me your questions.